Hey guys and girls, it's me Sudan Rocket and welcome to the final part. Well, the first part of the final part of the Sonic the Marathon. And today we're going to be tackling the Archie Sonic comics. Well, those could be great, right? But uh, depending on what comic you're looking at, of course, because yeah, the comic has been made fun of for having you know, stuff like this in the pages of their comic for a lengthy amount of time. But what if I told you there was an arguably better Archie Sonic comics out there that not many people talk about? And all it took was a reboot for all that happened. So um, in this first part, we're going to talk about how the reboot happened. And in the second part, we're going to be talking about, you know, what were the changes with the new rebooted comics. So um, without further ado, let's get into it. So to understand how the reboot started, we have to understand why the reboot happened in the first place. So, um... So during the release of Sonic Chronicles The Dark Brotherhood, one of the original writers for the Archie Sonic comic was kind of a bit mad, I guess. I don't really know the full context that um, uh, the Sonic Chronicles game had characters that are very, very, very similar to the characters he created for the Archie Sonic comic. And this kind of leads into a bit of a legal battle between him, Archie, and Sega. It was very complicated. There's a lot more videos out there that really go into more deeper of that kind of lawsuit. So um, to put it simply, at the end of the day, um, the Archie Sonic comic team weren't able to use some of the characters that have been created for you know the world they have in Archie Sonic comic. So um, since they cannot tippy toe I guess you can say around some of these characters they have to reboot the comic and luckily all the pieces are in place for a reboot During 2011 of course it was Sonic's 20th anniversary and Archie wanted to celebrate with their own comic special, I guess. I don't really know how it was formatted. It was technically just a regular issue of the Archie Sonic, but made towards the special for the 20th anniversary of, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog, called Sonic Genesis. Haha, <laughs> very funny. It's not like this is the thousand times this joke has been done. Um, put in the, the real one. No, we're not there yet. The other one. Ha. <laughs> I get it, but that's still not the one. There you go. So um, yeah, in this story, Dr. Eggman wanted to um, roboticize Sonic's world of Mobius in one big suit by using the Death Fake Mark II. Yeah, at this point, there really isn't that much of a Death Fake Mark II besides Sonic the Fighters. Sonic 4 Episode 2 won't be out until next year. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but uh, to make Dr. Eggman's plan more easier, he decided to unleash the Genesis wave using a Chaos Emerald, which uh, allows him to bend the rules of reality. When he decides to unleash the Genesis wave, it turned Sonic's entire world into the classic Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2. So the special just rolls around Sonic the Hedgehog and his buddies from the comics, including Tails, uh, going through you know the classic levels of Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2, skipping some, but yeah, the majority of you know levels you see in the game and it was fine it, it really isn't that special it was just a fun little walk down memory lane i guess you can say at the end of the day sonic turned super sonic and was able to fix everything and brought everything back to normal and it feels like it never happened in the first place although stuff did happen after that the chaos emerald was missing after everything was reverted back to normal but uh, yeah that it was just a fine little special to celebrate Sonic's 20th anniversary. But uh, little that people know that this is the beginning of the end of the original Archie Sonic comic universe. So after that whole Sonic Genesis arc happened, um, things kind of went down here for Sonic and his beloved team of Freedom Fighters. Okay. 
I'm guessing you can say that the Freedom Fighters kind of disbanded. The only Freedom Fighters technically that were still there is Sonic, Tails, and Amy. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's just a, a, the original Sega Sonic characters. But uh, yeah, of course this doesn't last for long because uh, um, a big ball of light, I don't know how you say it, a big flash of light happened when Sonic was trying to rescue, rescue Sally from the clutches of Dr. Eggman. So um, yeah, this is where the crossover begins with Mega Man. Yes, um, Archie's, Archie Comics actually got the rights to make a Mega Man comic. And it was actually pretty good because it was actually written by Ian Flynn. And he really knew what, who, who Mega Man is and what Mega Man is about. There was little nice references here and there. It was really nice. They really fleshed out Mega Man in that comic. And uh, yeah, he was also responsible for bringing back the fun in the Archie Sonic comics. He was also running them at the time. So uh, yeah, since you got these two iconic blue characters under your belt, naturally you cross them over and of course they did with the special event known as Worlds Collide. And it was pretty fun, uh, especially because the uh, when Eggman meet up with um, Mega Man's arch nemesis Dr. Wily via the Chaos Summer which teleported to Mega Man's world, uh, they decide to unleash the Genesis Wave once again to merge the two worlds together. And it was actually pretty cool because uh, in doing so, Mega Man's world skipped from being stuck in the events of Mega Man 3 all the way to Mega Man 10. And as for Sonic, they simplified it the world so it's, uh, it feels more like a game, so it feels more like an authentic Sonic and Mega Man crossover, unlike it's just a, you know, a crossover between just the comic version of Sonic and the comic version of Mega Man. So yeah, it was actually pretty fun. Of course, being the true blue heroes the two duo has, um, of course they try to find a way to restore back their realities. And uh, Mega Man was successful, he decided to use Chaos Control and the Genesis Wave to bring his world back to normal. And when he got back, he kind of forget the whole crossover ever happened. Only Dr. Wilder kind of got a feeling that the crossover happened. He felt like he wanted to smash a carton of eggs. That was really fun. But uh, yeah, as for Sonic, he wasn't so lucky because uh, he tried to restore his reality as well using the same technique. But uh, Dr. Eggman decided to dis interrupt his process because uh, he, cannot, he cannot afford to have his plans spoiled again by Sonic. So um, he interrupted the process. The entirety of the world shatters uh, around them, which is actually a pretty cool image when you see it. It's like shadows, like it shattered like glass. It was so cool, like psh, psh, I can already imagine in my head how it was in animation. Can somebody make an animation of that? The whole world turning into the the new world. That would be pretty awesome. But uh, yeah, this is the start of the new universe. They got absorbed in the a new another flash of light, and the new Archie Sonic universe began. This is where the reboot happened. This whole reboot does feel a bit sudden because of course uh, before the crossover happened they were in the verge of trying to find a way to bring Sally back to normal but the big flash of light happened then the the original universe officially ends there so it kind of feels like the comic just got end, just got cancelled suddenly so yeah it's a bit weird I kind of feel they should have tried to find a way to end it off nicely before moving on with the new universe but hey what you can do they kind of had the whole lawsuit going around so those things kind of interrupted the whole process, sadly. So, um, yeah, the new universe was born after that whole Super Genesis wave. That, that's what it's called, the, the Genesis wave that Sonic was firing to bring it back to normal. But, of course, it didn't happen. So, yeah, it was called the Super Genesis wave. And uh, what did it do to Sonic's world and how different it is to the old universe? Um, you're going to see next time when we head on to part two and see... Well, what's the difference is, so um, until then, rock it on. Hey, uh, is it just me? I feel like it's a big flash of light.